is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Let's all stand together and worship. Come on, let's say, Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Give praise. Give praise to the Lord. Beside him there's no other. Come on, give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Yes, it does. Give praise to the Lord. Beside him there's no other. This is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in This is the day, this is the day the Lord has made Oh, I will rejoice and be glad in He brought us from morning to dancing From glory to glory This is the day the Lord has made What are we waiting for? Come on and praise the Lord Hear the word of the Lord, there's freedom for the captives, good news to the poor, and beauty for the ashes, oh yeah. So what are we waiting for, what are we waiting for, we say, this is the day the Lord has made. and be glad in it. Ooh, this is the day the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. He brought us from morning to dancing, from glory to glory. This is the day the Lord has made. What are we waiting for? Yeah. Come on and praise the Lord. Savior's love, I live because He is risen. Yes, He's risen. I live, I live, I live to tell what the Lord has done. I live to sing of my Savior. I live because He is risen. You believe He's risen, say amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice and be glad in This is the day, this is the day the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice and be glad in This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice and be glad in He brought us from morning. is the day the Lord has made. What are we waiting for? Yes. Come on and praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. What are we waiting for? Oh. Come on and praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. Great to see you here today. Please be seated for baptism, Pastor Clark. Well, good morning. I'm thrilled that you're here. 
We've got a beautiful girl who's going to follow the Lord and believers' baptism. And I, I never get tired of saying, hey, somebody got saved, and now they're following the Lord and believers' baptism. The first act of obedience after we come to faith in Jesus Christ is to know that we need to be baptized. Now, listen, if you never get baptized, you can go to heaven. But, hey, how do you get to heaven? you got to know you're a sinner. you got to know you can't save yourself. you got to know Jesus is not a good way. He's the only way. And then the Bible says you make an act of your will, your volition. And you ask Jesus to come in your heart, forgive you of your sins, and give you eternal life. So when somebody steps in these waters, we've talked about that, we've prayed about that, and they've stepped into these waters as a testimony. A testimony to what? It's a testimony to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Can I tell you, Jesus is alive. And may I say this, when somebody steps in these waters, they're now alive spiritually. Why? Because they pass from death to light, from hell to heaven, from serving themselves to now serving Jesus Christ. They said, I'm a sinner, I can't save myself, and they've asked Jesus to come into their heart. So when they step in these waters, they're announcing to the world spiritually, quickened by the Spirit of God, they're now alive because they've made Jesus the Savior and Lord of their lives. It's also a picture of how the Bible said one day, the dead in Christ are gonna rise first. The trumpet's gonna sound, then the dead in Christ are gonna rise first, then we which are alive and remain are gonna be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So Jesus thought it so important that he walked 75 miles one way. When he got to John the Baptist, and I think that name matters, John the Baptist, he looked at John and said, I need to be baptized. And every time I read it, it's amazing to me that John looks at him and said, no, 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 you ought to be baptizing me. And Jesus made a statement. He said, suffer it to be so now that I might fulfill all righteousness. He was not getting baptized to eradicate his sins. He was sinless. He is the sinless son of God. What was he doing? He was inaugurating or beginning his earthly ministry. He was setting a pattern for us to be obedient. And I want to tell you, I, there's a lot of people that have been saved, but they've not been scripturally baptized. And it's amazing what happens when they do that. You go back to the book of Acts, and they ask him, were you baptized into, to the Lord Jesus, or were you baptized to John's baptism? And when they realized their baptism wasn't right, they came and were baptized, and, and they got it right. Why? Because it sets your spiritual life in the right direction. It points you in the right direction. And it gets you going spiritually. I just say this. If you've not been saved, get saved today. But if you've been saved, but you, you, you're questioning about your baptism, you're not sure if it was scriptural, then would you see me? Would you see the staff? Would you call the church? I promise you, we're not going to hound you. But it is a great, great, great day when you get this thing lined up and get it right. And so listen, I just say, if somebody ever steps in these waters, they're a part of your friends or family, we want you to stand and identify with them like these that are standing around this pool are doing even now. So I'm going to ask if she will, Candace Elliott, to come. Amen. That a girl. And Candace came up last Sunday night after church, and she said, I want to be baptized. So we started talking about baptism. Hey, not only did she need baptism, but she got saved. And I'm just proud of her. I'm so thrilled about her life. Candace, you did good, girl. So let me ask you something. Do you know that you've asked Jesus in your heart? Then in obedience to our Lord's divine command, I now baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, buried in the likes of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. What a girl. Good God. Come on, stand with us together. One salvation, one doorway that leads to life, one redemption, one confession. I believe in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe in crucifixion, by his blood I have been set free. I believe in the resurrection, hallelujah, his life is death's defeat. All praise to God our Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome the King who was and is and I 
believe in the hope of heaven. He's preparing a place for me. Far beyond what hearts imagine, ears have heard or eyes have seen. I believe that the day is coming. He's returning to claim his bride. Light the altar, keep it burning. See the Lamb who rose a roaring lion. Oh, yes. All praise to God the Father. All praise to Christ the Son. Yes. All praise to the Holy Spirit. Our God is overcome. The King who was and is in death. Shame of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away from the one who saved my life? No, I never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away from the one who saved my life? No, I never be ashamed. The gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away from the one who saved my life? All praise to God the Father. All praise to Christ the Son. All praise to the Holy Spirit. Our God is over. Take a survey this morning. How many of you know some rude people? Let me see your hands. Please don't point. Just raise your hand straight up. I, listen, I am a diehard Kansas Jayhawk fan in basketball. I love like Jayhawks in basketball. And you Texas Tech people were rude to us this week. <laughs> you spanked us and sent us home. And I, and, and I just, all that's gone on this week with games and political this, and it dawned on me. It dawned on me. You just got to remind yourself sometimes. Because the Bible said this, not Clark, but the Bible said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. There's not anything in this world that compares to the Lord Jesus Christ. You talk about the greatest of the great. You say, well, my team's the greatest. That team's the greatest. This guy's, no, no, no. Jesus is king of kings. Amen. Yeah, amen. And hey, he is coming back. So, so you say, what are we doing in here this morning? We're getting ready for him to come back. And here's the deal. When, when we know he's coming back, we live different. Uh, you remember when your parents would leave the house and they'd tell you to do something, and like three minutes before they got back, you started working on it? How many know that? Well, he's coming back. There's not one thing left biblically for him to come back. We've got to be ready. This service helps us to get ready for that. And so I want you to be ready. I want you to get in tune. I want you to sing. I want you to get your focus on the things of God. I want you to get ready for the word of God because I think God has a word for us today. So let's be ready for that. Come on, let's pray. 
Father, I want to thank you for every good and perfect gift. And God, I want to thank you for these that are here today that have made being in your house a priority. I just, th I thank you for them. I thank you for their lives. God, if there's somebody here not saved, I sure want them to get saved today. And God, if there's somebody who just has a special need, God, you can meet that need, and I pray you would. We've got many in our church that are hurting, many in our church that are sick. God, I pray you'd remind us that our hope is not in this world. Our hope is in eternity. God, we have a sure word from heaven that tells us that eye hath not seen and ear hath not heard, and neither hath entered into the heart of man the things that, God, you've prepared for us. So, God, in Jesus' name, meet with us today. Let us worship, let us sing, let us exalt Jesus. And, God, let us make eternal decisions. And in advance, for everything you're going to do, we're going to thank you and praise you for it. Because it's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. And good and loud now, everybody said, come on, let's shake hands.
continue in worship. Paul said, study to show yourself approved. It is important to know what you believe and why you believe it. It's not just a story. It's a living, breathing, walking testimony of a God so good he leave his home in glory for the world he loved, for the world that he so loved. It's not just a story, no. I believe in the life of Jesus. I believe that he conquered death. I believe in the resurrection. I believe he's coming back again. I believe that his spirit's with us. I believe that he gives us power. I believe that he is the son of God. I believe it. I believe it. From Jesus, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it, I can't deny it. If I said I got here on my own, I'd be lying. Cause my eyes have seen the goodness of the Father. We're the ones he loves, we're the ones that he so loves. Yeah, I can't deny it, no, oh, say, I believe in the life of Jesus, I believe that he conquered death, I believe in the resurrection, I believe he's coming back again, I believe that the Spirit's with us, I believe that he gives us power, I believe that he is the Son of God, I believe
Our judge and our defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Thank you, Jesus. Descended into darkness, but you rose in glorious light. Forever seated. Singing today, you can be seen. Like Daniel in the lion's den, helpless and afraid. Like Paul and Silas in the cell, bound and locked away. Of the prison I built, I was sick of all my sin and haunted by my guilt. Then somebody came and shattered all my chains, torn out all my prison walls. Jesus is his name. I've been set free from the cell. But Jesus needed to make his way right in The walls began to shake him when he came down to me And I knew that I was rescued Cause he gave me the key I've been set free from the cell
right, take your Bibles and go two places. Go to Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. That's the second book in the Bible. Then make your way back to the end. Somewhere by Revelation, you're going to find the book of Hebrews. And I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 11. So Exodus chapter 2 and a Hebrews chapter 11. Let me just say this. Here in a week or so, uh, we have another new member's reception. If you've not signed up to be a part of that new member's reception, would you please do that today? You can either put it on your card and turn it in when we take up the offering. Or you can go to one of the guest services, either over here in the East Hallway or North Hallway, and let them know uh, that you're going to be a part of that. We want you, your family, we have a great meal. Uh, the finance committee's here, the staff's all here. Uh, we have some of the Sunday school teachers that are here. So you come be a part of that. And if your family is a new member and you've not been to one of those, then this is for you. You will be glad you came. You're going to get a lot of information. Uh, we're going to give you a whole lot of things to sign up for to see as far as the church and the inner workings of it. And then also... Uh, we want you to come be a part of that because it's a w great way to connect with folks. It's a great way to meet some folks and uh, know who the staff is, finance committee, what have you. So, And then all the other guests that will be here. So I want you to be a part of that. And then uh, tonight we're making our way through the book of Revelation. And uh, we're doing the 15 things that make their way to the end of the age. Uh, I keep saying it. We're at the end of the age. Amen. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. Amen. Amen. And so uh, tonight we're going to be talking uh, about the marriage supper of the Lamb. I want to tell you, I think that involves fajitas and enchiladas. <laughs> if not, I'm going to be gravely disappointed. If we get up there and it's liver and onions and salmon patties, I'm going out of there. I'm just telling you, I'm out. But I don't think God would do that to us, okay? So you just be ready. We're going to talk about that tonight. We just got done talking about how there's a judgment, a bema seat, and uh, that's where you get your rewards. We talked about that last week. And then this week we're going to talk about the marriage supper of the Lamb, when it takes place, where it takes place, why it takes place, why it ought to matter to you. Now we're really making a big deal about Sunday nights. Sunday nights are our best service. I will just tell you, if you'll ever come one time, you'll know why I keep promoting it, why I keep talking about it. Uh, we, uh, when we were in the other building, man, we had our Sunday nights jam-packed, and uh, now we've got a bigger auditorium. So I want you to come be a part of this. It will bless you. It will bless your family. Uh, it will enrich you as a Christian. Uh, it, you, you'll learn things that will work with you all week long. It'll help you to grow. The Bible says to desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow thereby. And I'm telling you, Sunday nights we get into some really good stuff, and I want you to be here and be a part of it. So this morning, uh, we're in our series on the life of Moses. Exodus chapter 2 is today. We look at all grown up. Exodus chapter 2. And I want us to begin in verse 11. Then here in a minute, we're going to make our way to Hebrews chapter 11. But Exodus chapter 2 and verse 11. Notice what it says. And it said, it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting in Hebrew. Now remember, Moses was a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he, Moses, slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? And tendest thou to kill me as thou killest the, the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay or kill Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Let's pray. Father, I don't ever want to get over that your word is inerrant, it's infallible, and God, it's been preserved for us. God, the life lessons of Moses are the life lessons that ought to be ours. I pray we'd look at Moses' life today. I pray we'd look at the principles, and I pray we'd look at the applications of his life into ours today. God, you, you know what lies ahead in our lives. You, you know what will happen tomorrow and Tuesday, and you, you know what will happen Friday. You, you know and so, God, we commit ourselves to you even now. And, God, how we want you to work in our lives, how we want you to move in our lives, how we want you, God, to direct our steps. 
You told us in your word the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So God, order our steps. And God, in Jesus' name, let us walk out of here knowing that, God, we've been in your presence. Because it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we do pray in good and loud. Now, everybody said... Anytime you start studying the Word of God and you look into it, you're going to find out that God is what is known as a very, very honest God. He, he talks about the character. He talks about the lack of character. He talks about incidents. He talks about failures. He talks about successes. Uh, we've already quoted where the Bible says, greater is he that is in us and he that is in the world. But he also talks about those times in our lives where we stumble and fall. And may I remind you, the Bible said, all we like sheep have gone astray. There's not anybody in this building that's perfect today. And, and thank God, God's not writing the record now because it may be our record that was in the Word of God. But you go back and you look and you find David. You know what you find out? David was a man after God's own heart. And what did he do? He stood on a rooftop one night when he should have been at war. And when he wasn't at war, he looked over there and saw Bathsheba. Before he knew it, he had called for her. Before he knew it, he had slept with her. Before he knew it, he was going to kill her husband. Hey, his whole life got into a mess. You look at Absalom, you look at Amnon, you look at his daughter Tamar. You look at the mess that one night created in David's life. You get the real record when, when God begins to speak about David. You, you get the real record about Judas. Judas was good. I mean, Judas was everybody's favorite. Hey, everybody liked Judas. I mean, when you look at Judas, he was a treasurer. Judas was the one that probably was their spokesman. I mean, when they talked about somebody who was going to betray Jesus, not one person said it's Judas. But, but we get the real record of Judas where Judas throw down, throws down his 30 pieces of silver and said, I betrayed the blood of an innocent man. And they said, what is that now to us? And the Bible said that, that, that Judas went out and the Bible said that he hung him. Himself. You find Peter. And on the night that Jesus was going to be crucified, Jesus said to him, said, Peter, Satan had desired thee that he might sift you like wheat. Hey, Peter, Satan has desired that he might take your life. Hey, he doesn't care about you. He's not for you. And he's going to sift you like wheat. And Peter that day could not imagine that he would ever be disgruntled. He could not imagine that he would ever turn on the Lord Jesus Christ. He could not imagine that he would ever be considered a coward. On that same night, he pulls out a knife and he cuts off Malchus, a high servant. here. He's ready for the fight. But the Bible said the Lord looks at him and said, put away your sword. Don't you think I could have called angels? Don't you think I could have called legions to come and protect me this day? And the Bible said that Peter stood next to a fire. He denied the Lord just like the Lord said he would. The rooster began to crow. Jesus came walking out of Caiaphas. This is all Jesus looked on Peter. And the Bible said that Peter went out and he wept bitterly. We get the story of Peter. We get the story of Mary. A little girl that's just a little virgin on the back side of nowhere. She's not in an important town. She's in a military town. She comes up expecting the angel of God said, he's going to overshow, the Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you. You're going to have a child like nobody's ever will and ever has had a child. And you're going to be a virgin that has, has this baby Jesus. And she said, how can these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. You look at Mary and she says, be it unto me according to thy word. You think about her husband. You think about her dad. You think about her family. You think about all the disappointment that came. And how in the world could this be? You go to John chapter 8, and they're still mocking Jesus, saying, we be not born of fornication. But you get the real story of Mary Hannah. She's crying for a child. And God visits her and says, you're going to have a child. She goes to the man of God, Eli. Eli says, why is it that you're drunk before noon? And she said, I'm not drunk. I'm of sorrow. I want to have a child. And a year later, you get the real story of Hannah and her son Samuel. The rich young ruler walked up to Jesus, and it's a very poignant story. And, and the Bible said, Luke 10, it says he comes and running, and he, and he kneels down before Jesus. He says, good master, what good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? I mean, he was sincere. He's not a smart aleck. He, he was not playing games with God. He, he really came in sincerity. And yet the Bible says that Jesus said, here's, here's, your, here's what you do. You keep these six of the Ten Commandments. He said, hey, I've kept them all. No, no, Jesus wanted him to know he was a sinner, that all of us are sinners. And he said, I'll tell you what you do. Go sell all you have and give it to the poor and come and follow me. And the Bible said the young man went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. And Jesus, and honestly, said these words. He said, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of heaven? Oh, friend, now we come to the life of Moses. And the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 7, verse 23, that he was full 40 years old. Hey, hey, he's grown up. He's now a man. He's lived inside Pharaoh's palace. He's been the son of Pharaoh's daughter. His mother miraculously has been able to raise him as a Hebrew nurse. His sister Miriam was there the day that he was spared when they pulled him up out of that river. But now we find out that, that when we look at Moses, Moses is a grown man. He's 40 years of age. 
And the Bible tells us he's been brought up on the knee of his mother. He's been rescued to his family. And miraculously now he knows the heritage of these Hebrew people. He now knows the heritage of the people of God. He now writes the first five books of the Bible. We get to Pentateuch because of Moses. You think, where did he get all that history? He got that history from his mother. But now he's 40 years old. And at 40 years of age, he's got to make some decisions on his own. Every life comes to a place where your faith has to rest, not in your pastor, not in your Sunday school teacher, not in your mama, and sometime your faith has to rest inside your soul. You gotta know this is what you believe. You gotta know this is what God has for your life. I can stand here and cheer you on. I can pray for you. Everybody in this church can root you on. Your mama can root you on. Your daddy can root you on. But at some point, you've got to decide if the faith once delivered to the saints is yours. Don't you see something? Hold your place in Exodus 2. But I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 11. Because this is the faith hall of fame. If you get in here, God has honored you. If you get in here, God knows your past, your present, your future. God knows what he wants to do with your life and you find out these people are people of faith. Verse one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Verse six says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Verse four says this, he or she being dead, they yet speak. Moses' life speaks to us. If you're there, Exodus chapter 11, look at verse 24. Because in verse 24, here's that word, by faith. Everything you do in life is by faith. You say, well, how'd you get here today? You got here by faith. What is faith? It's the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Faith doesn't make sense to us. And faith does not make sense to the world. Can I get an amen on that? Well, what does Proverbs say? It says, lean not unto thine own understanding, but it says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and what he shall direct thy paths. What did the psalmist say? The Bible said he knows our down city and uprising. He knows our thought afar off. The Bible said he, he, he will order the steps of a good man or a good woman. How do you get your steps ordered? How do you get your life together? You got to live by faith. And listen, faith never makes sense. Faith is the opposite of our reason. You see, our reason says, well, I, I'm going to heaven because I'm good. And bad people go to hell. No, people that go to heaven are not people that are good. And people that go to hell are not people that are bad. People that go to heaven are people that know Jesus Christ. How, how do you do that? You do it by faith. Now, wait a minute. We weren't there 2,000 years ago when he was hung on a cross. We were there 2,000 years ago when he came walking out of that grave. And may I say, praise God, he came walking out of that grave. I'm the resurrection. I'm the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then he said, do you believe that? How do you believe that? You believe that by faith. There's, there's a lot of people. If I read Matthew chapter 7, there's a lot of people that are going to stand before God one day and he's going to say, depart from me. Wasn't that they were bad people? Wasn't that they didn't care about their families? Wasn't even that they, that they were religious. No, listen, religious people can be lost. They're going to stand there and hear him say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You know what that means, ye that work iniquity? It means you loved your sin more than you loved the way of salvation. And what is the way of salvation? It's not Buddha, it's not Muhammad, it's not Baptist, it's not Catholic, it's not Church of Christ. There's just one way of salvation, and his name is Jesus. How, how do you do that? How do you get saved? You get saved by faith. You, you don't earn it. Moses, the Bible said, by faith. Notice this, when he would come to years, notice this, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. What happened to Moses? Moses, for 40 years, had grown up in that palace. They had doted on him. They had given him the king's education. When you go later into Acts chapter 7, we find out about Moses. Moses was a brilliant man. Moses was skilled in all the languages. Moses was skilled as a speaker, which is amazing when you find him later. But oh man, good looking, talented, a good speaker. He, he got all that at the feet of Pharaoh. Pharaoh was the king of the day. Pharaoh was the ruler of the day. And there said Moses watching every bit of it. But there came a time 
when the Bible said his parents were not afraid of the king's commandment. I want to tell you, if ever there was a day that parents better be brave, you're living in that day. I, I, I love to walk out there by that nursery, and I, I love to go in our children's department, how grateful I am for Caleb and Ethan and all the volunteers that make up that team that goes over there and loves those kids on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. But, but I got to tell you, th there comes a time when every parent has to decide that for your child, you're going to raise them in the nurture, the fear, and the admonition of God. Did you, did you hear me? Can I get an amen on that? Because pastor's fixing to be pastor. Come on, amen. My wife's not here, and I'm going to say what I want. Can I get an amen? <laughs> but I'm going to tell you right now. Hey, Moses had some brave parents. You're living in a culture that hates God. You're living in a culture that is pushing your kids away from everything that's God and they're pushing them towards Satan. By the way, you either get on God's side or you get on the devil's side. There is no middle ground. Now listen, if you fire me after this, I'm gonna be fine. Because I'm telling you, we're fixing to put our big boy pants on in here. Amen. Amen. Oh, preach it, preach it. Okay. <laughs> parents got to be brave. You remember what we're talking about here? Let me say something to parents. You better watch your kids. Right. Hey, you better guard your kids. You better be in charge. Amen. Amen. Talk about raising up in fear and nurture and admonition of the Lord. Hey, Moses had parents that refused to bow down to Pharaoh. And let me tell you what Pharaoh was. He was the God of that day. Let me tell you where Clark's at. I've had me a slow burn all week long. We have church on Sunday nights. I'm your pastor that one day is going to stand before God and give an account. You're not just anybody to me. You're just not idle people to me. I'm telling you, nobody outside of your immediate family loves you like your pastor. I get the role of this church. I pray over it. I, I get visitors. I pray over you. And you know what I want you to do? I want you to be somebody who when you stand before God, he can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what I want. Faithful is the key. I'm talking to parents. Do you remember that? Come on, Amen. And let me tell you what gets on my nerves. There are those of you, and I love you. You remember, that's what your daddy said before he spanked you. Come on, amen. <laughs> this whipping's gonna hurt me more than it. How many know that's a lie? <laughs> well, if that's the truth, lay on the bed and I'll beat you for a while, all right? <laughs> hey, hey, listen to me. I won't say this right. I don't want to take you off, but if it ticks you off, I really don't care. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because last Sunday night in the United States of America, there was a satanic ritual that went on on television and 94 million people watched it. Hey, they're up there in this little booth with Taylor Swift, which by the way, she's not that swift to me. And she got this rapper that I don't know anything at all about, but when I saw it, I said, how in the world does that happen in the United States of America? They showed it to 94 million people, and there was this rapper, I Spice, and she's up there making satanic symbols with her hands, and then she has an upside-down cross. And then Taylor Swift is dating a guy that later that week went to a drunken party that they celebrated a Super Bowl, and somehow in America, we glamorize that. And you know what bothers me the most? Some of you stayed home to watch it. I'm not coming back. Well, you don't come now. <laughs> You're hurting my feelings. Hey, you can put on your big boy pants. Amen. Yeah. Remember what my mama used to say to me? You can get glad in the same pants you got. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> hey, 
hey, I think Jesus could come back tonight, amen. And what you don't understand is that there is an eternal biblical responsibility that your pastor has not to tell you what you want to hear, but to tell you what you need to hear. And if that's true for me as the priest of this place, hey, I got news for you, dads. You're the priest of your house. Is that what you want for your kids? To, to be drunk in public? To, to, to be vile? To, to be flashing satanic symbols? Is that what? No, that's not what you want. Then give me, let me give you a heads up. Stop promoting it. Say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Something happens when you do that. Something miraculous happens when you say, hey, I'm on God's side. I don't care where I Spice is at. I don't care where Swift is at. I don't care where Kelsey's at. I'm gonna get over here, bless God. I'm gonna be on God's side if it's just me and my family. I preach so much better when Tony Lynn's not here to chew me out. You put your phones up, amen. He refused. He, he refused. Look at that next verse. Look at verse 25. Verse 25, look what it says. Choosing rather suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He made a choice. And he chose God's side. And did you see, there's pleasure in sin. Did you not know that? But it's only for a season. I, I, I've got stories. I've got stories that I can tell you from here till midnight. As an evangelist, doing youth camps, doing revivals here at our church, I can tell you of people that got out and you couldn't get them back in. Clark, you're just so wrong. And Clark, you're just so bombastic. And Clark, you're just so determined to say those things. Listen, man, the reason I'm determined to say them is because there is pleasure in sin, but it's just for a season. It goes away. I can tell you standing by guys, good guys that were dying of diseases that their sin had caused. Oh man, it was fun on Friday night. Oh, it's fun when we was out there having a good time. But Moses made a decision. His parents had led him to make that decision. He, he didn't choose the pleasures of sin. Look at verse 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Now, don't you get that? Esteeming the reproach of who? Say it again. Esteeming the reproach of who? Christ. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Notice this, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Tread respect unto the recompense of the reward. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. People have come to me and say, you know, people in the Old Testament got saved different than they did in the New Testament. That's not true. Moses, who, who, who did he respect? He respected who? Christ. Right. Who's he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. He gives us the first five books of the Bible. He gives us Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And you're telling me he, he was living for Christ? Can I tell you they got saved looking to the cross and we get saved looking back to the cross, but we all get saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And did you get that? That word recompense. And that word reward, you know what it means? It means he made a decision. We've already gotten where he's chosen. We've already gotten where his family was there beside him. They, they, they trained him up in the fear, nurture, and admonition of the Lord. But he, had, he, he realized that this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Yeah. You, you, do you remember when Jesus had fasted for 40 days. And when he came out, the devil accosted him and three different times he accuses him. Three different times he tries to give him a temptation. By the way, he was tempted at all points like as we are, yet without sin. But you remember what he did? He said, hey man, I'll take care of you. Hey man, look up and look, look, look at what I can give you. I have never understood why the devil tempted Jesus with that because Jesus owns it all. But I think to myself, 
If Satan will do that to Jesus, won't he do that to us? You, you, you have no idea. This, this church is not a hobby for Clark and Tony Lynn. It's our life. And I, I don't want to make you mad. I don't want to run you off, but I'll tell you what I want. I don't want a big church because God's not impressed with a big church. God's impressed with a holy church. With people that love him. Who desire the sincere milk of the word. Who, who desire to grow that they, that they might know Jesus better. That they might know the word of God better. You go back to my, he, he said, wait a minute. What we have right now, it's going to fade away. I don't know if you'll remember this name. How many remember the name Dwayne Thomas? That means your old time cowboy fans living in the past. <laughs> Just like your pastor, amen. The cowboys are like an old Baptist church. We're living on, off memories. Come on, amen. <laughs> Played in the Super Bowl and they stuck a microphone in this place. Then what was it like to play in the ultimate game? He said, ultimate game? He said, they're going to play it again next year? And the reporter said, yes. He said, it's not the ultimate game. It's just a game. Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves cannot break through and steal. Moses made some, look, look at this, look at this. We're not getting back to Exodus chapter 2. Can I just say that? Amen. Amen. But look, look at what he said in verse 27. Verse 27 says, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. You say, what does that mean? He endured. I, I, I know, I know, I know you're under attack. I know the world that you're living in, it's turned upside down and it's being shaken. I want to tell you, Israel is a prophetic nation. The nations that bless Israel, God will bless. The nations that curse Israel, God will curse. And let me tell you, don't you ever get near somebody who curses Israel. But I'm not sure when it all breaks loose if our nation would stand with Israel right now. We've killed, if, 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 if statistics are right, and I don't think they are, but, but according to statistics, if we've killed as many babies as we say we've killed, if we've changed the definition of marriage, hey, if we poison kids, you send your kids off to college and they come back liberal, amen, they come back hating God. You say, why do you say that? I just wonder, I just wonder, as a nation, if we're even blessable. Well, we need a new president. Well, we do need a new president, yes. But I don't care if you resurrected Billy Graham and made him president. I'm not sure that would solve all the problems. Hey, let's go get Abraham Lincoln back from the dead. Surely he could come back and straighten everything out. I don't know if you brought him back. Let me tell you what I know. I know at some point the people of God I said the people of God have to be hungry for the things of God. Moses was one person. I said Moses was one person. But Moses took a stand. And when he took that stand, the world was never the same. You say, Clark, what do we need? If my people, I said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. You, you, you know what happens when you get preaching like this? You either rebel, you get mad, or you humble yourself. My people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. You say, what's the answer? Is it at the ballot box? No, it's when we pray. Call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. Now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think. Therefore I say to you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. Can I tell you, God still answers prayer. 
Seek my face. And here's the hard part. And turn, turn from our wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Then will I forgive their sins. And here it is. And then, then, then will I heal their land. Moses was one person. But we're still talking about him all these years later. Because he chose, and he chose to take his name. You say, Clark, what are you asking me? Well, number one, if you're not saved, can I tell you today's the day to get saved? If you're not a part of this church, this is the day to take a stand with this church. I say all the time, preachers can't preach like this. I got buddies get run out of their church for preaching half like I did this morning. I want to tell you something. I praise God for some godly men who will stand by their pastor. Can I tell you that? I thank God for some godly ladies who'll say, preach it, preacher. I'm not looking for, I'm not looking for members. I've been praying God send us a remnant. Send us people in the end times who believe your word, who'll cling to your word, who'll stand up and say, preach the word, preacher. Man, there's some you even said, you know you ought to be up. This is your church. It's high time you joined it. Come on, amen. It's high time you took your stand today, amen. And then I want to say this. If ever there was a time that our nation needed godly people to take a stand, that time is now. We don't have time to wait. Well, November, well, Martin, no, forget it. Now. I tell you this sometimes. When, when it came time for Abraham, who looked across Sodom and Gomorrah, and he knew that his nephew Lot was stuck in that mess. By the way, Lot was a saved man. His righteous soul was vexed from day to day. Come on, amen. And the Bible said that Abraham said, Oh God, for 50, for 50 righteous men, will you spare the nation? You no, no, God, for 45, for 40, God, God uh, how, about, how about 30? For, would, would you do it for 30? Finally, he got down to 10. He said, God, for 10 righteous men, will you spare this nation? God said, I will. I want to tell you something. That principle still works today. I don't know where all the other godly men are, but I know there's some right here in this building. He said, what are you asking us to do? I'm asking you to get things right in your own house, in your own life. I'm asking you to fall on your faces and say, God, start a revival. Start it in me. I want you to bow your heads for just a moment. And men, you ought to be coming right now. Men, you, we ought not have to beg you to come. Men, you ought to lead the way. Where are you at, men? Where's the daddies? Where's the Come on right now, daddies. You don't need Clark to milk an invitation. Come on, where are the men that'll fall on these altars? Where, where are the men that'll say, I'm gonna stand with what's right? Where's the men that'll say, I'm gonna stand for God? We're not singing, we're just playing just. Come on, have, where are my godly men? Where's the 10 righteous men? Where are you at, Dad? Where are you at, young man? Where are you at, high schooler? Where are you at? Come on, come on. Amen. 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 Amen.
Heads are bowed for just a moment. If you need to be saved, the staff's going to be down front. Would you come take them by the hand and say, I want to be saved? If you need a church home and you need a church home, everybody needs a church. God set it up that way. You hadn't joined. Come on, today's your day. And I just felt like the men ought to lead the way, but I want families to come now. I want ladies to come. It's not exclusively to men. You've got to have you godly ladies. You've got to have you godly teenage girls. If you need to be saved, or if you need to join this church, I want you to come. Father, in Jesus' name, let, let this be the hour of decision. Let this be the hour when, like Moses, we choose, we refuse some things, and we choose some things. And I pray we'll fall on these altars. I pray we'll come to say, I'm joining this church. This is what, that my day I'm getting saved. Let's stand together. Stand come, on. come on, right now. Come on, everybody's coming. Hey, I need a church home. Hey, I need to be saved. Come on. Amen. Amen. Come on. He's been my fourth man in the fire. Time after time. Come on, I'm joining. I'm getting saved. Come on. Born of his spirit. Washed in his blood. And what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Perfect submission. All is at coming now and this is our time when we take up of our regular tithes and our regular offerings the Bible said where your treasure is there will your heart be also last couple of weeks I've had this prevailing thought when I, because I don't want to just give one of these I don't want to I, most people think you're trying to rob them when you take an offering anyway that's not what I'm after I want you to be blessed come on amen but uh, 
it, the, the prevailing thought for me has been, we can trust God with our eternity. Can I get an amen on that? And if we can trust God with our eternity, we can trust God with our money. It's gonna fade away. It's not gonna last. 10%, he, he takes the other 90% and explodes it in your life. It's the only subject where he makes that guarantee. He says, try me and prove me here with right now and see if I'll not open you up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you can't contain. Either God meant that when he said it or God's a liar. And I want to tell you, God means every word he says in his word. I want you to be blessed. That's what tithing's about. That's what giving's about. You tithe and it's 10%. You give when you get above that. So you can give in the giving kiosk over here in the north hallway. You can give over here in the east hallway. There's another kiosk. You can give online by church app, church text, or automatic draw. But come on, everybody together, you cannot outgive God. Father, we love you. Thank you for this day. Thank you, God, for your presence being in our midst. Thank you for great people who want preaching, who want the word of God, who will let the Holy Spirit take over a service. God, thank you for these people. God, thank you for showing up today. Meet with us now. God, bless this offering. God, may, may you take it and use it for eternity's sake. May this be the greatest investment of our lives as we give to the kingdom of God. And oh God, would you bless those? God, would you just, just take your word and God magnify it in their lives. Let them know that God, you're working in their lives. God, we're gonna thank you for what you do because it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Good and loud. Everybody said, you may be seated. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Willow Park Baptist Church. We are super excited that you joined us for worship this morning. If you are a first time guest, can you do us a favor? Go out to the foyer. Go to our first time guest booth and fill out some information. We have a box of chocolates, a gift just for you as a thank you for your visit. And here's a few announcements. We have things coming up. Tomorrow on Monday at 6.30, we have divorce care and grief share that meets. If you have any questions about this, you can go see Lori Sadler or to our guest service booth and they'll be sure to help you out. Every Wednesday night, at 6.30 p.m., we have our connection classes that meet together. We are going through the book Continue by Dr. Paul Chapel. It is just fundamental things that we believe and why we believe them. If you come, it'll benefit your faith greatly. The youth through the adults are going through that book, but we also have kids that meet as well. So be sure and join us at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday nights. We have two conferences coming up in the month of April that we want you to put on your calendars. On April 5th and 6th, we have Ironman Men's Conference. And then on April 20th, we have the Renewed Women's Conference. If you have any questions about these, or if you wanna register, you can do that on the website now. Tuesday, February 27th at 6.30 p.m., we are having our new members reception. Um, we had one at the end of January, and it went absolutely great. It was a great time of fellowship, getting to know our new members. So if you wanna be a part of this one, you can sign up at guest services or sign up on the worship guide and we'll be sure and look forward to seeing you there. It's been a great morning of worship here at Willow Park Baptist, but the best service of the week is tonight at 6 p.m. We call it Sunday Night Live. So join us for fellowship, worship, and the word, and it'll be a great, great time. We'll see you tonight. Have a great afternoon. Peace. You know, after you work with kids for a while, that's what happens to you. Amen. That's right. Hey, Zinia and Paul, come on up here. Where you guys at? Come on up here. Hey, Paul got saved last week. He brought his wife this week. And can I tell you, they're, getting, they're, they're doing things right around here. God bless you. They're going to get baptized. Amen. Proud of you. God bless you. And I know Jimmy Tudder and where's Tommy? They work with you. Is that right? Yeah, they work with you. Where's Jimmy and Tommy? They in here? You guys come down here and stand while I'm making these up. Tommy, come down here. Jimmy, where are you? That's how you do it. You get your friends to come to Jesus. Come on, amen. Uh, where's John? Where's John Ward? That's all right. John, come on up here. John today is coming by baptism to join the Willow Park Baptist Church. Amen. Good stuff, John. Proud of you, buddy. Amen, amen, amen. Where's Nate? I know Nate. Come on up here. Nate is coming today by statement, joining the Willow Park Baptist Church. Come on, amen, Nate. Proud of you, buddy. Where's Andrew and Candy? I saw you guys come on in here. They're joining the Willow Park Baptist Church. Come on, amen. Proud of you guys. Great day, great day. Amen, 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 and amen. Come on, let's stand together. Will you do that? Now listen, that was preaching this morning. 
Now listen, listen, wait, 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 wait. I don't want you to clap, I want you to come back tonight. If there's like three of you, Tony Lynn's like, gonna be like, you did it again. She told me one Sunday driving home, I don't know why anybody comes to this church the way you talk to them. Maybe you know it's wrong. Listen, I love you, I love you, I love you. And listen, I had a burden this morning. That wasn't a sermon, that was a burden. We didn't even get to Exodus chapter two. We'll get there. But uh, sometimes, like a baby, you gotta deliver a burden. Come on, amen. Justin, pray for us. Love you, I hope, I hope you'll be back tonight. Sing this with me. We're filled with wonder, awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Father, we love you so much, and we love you because of your great love for us. We thank you for the privilege, and we can't stress that lightly enough, the privilege to be in your house today. We thank you for the move of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for those that have been added to our church today, and God, we can leave here today saying it's been a great day in your house. Go with us as we go our separate ways, but God, bring us back tonight for a full house for Sunday Night Live. We're excited to see what you're going to do through us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen.